Okay, let's talk about passing by reference. So first of all, we have to define what reference means. Let's say I'm declaring a variable called x, and I'm going to put the string a into that variable. I create another variable y. It also holds the letter a. And then another variable z, and it's going to point to x. If I make a change to z, I am effectively changing the value here. This is not a copy of x. This is actually x. So if I say that z is going to be equal to the letter b now, I have just changed x. This is a reference back to the other variable. So why is that important? Well, if we're looking at functions, I have an array called names, a bunch of names inside of here. If I pass that variable off to a function right here, what I'm doing is I'm passing a reference. This is not a brand new array. This is not a copy of names. This is actually a pointer back to names. So if I do anything to this variable, I am making the changes to this array right here because this is only a reference back to the original value. Now we can create copies. There's a few ways that we can do this. With arrays, we can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to make an array from this thing. This will take all the values here and create a brand new array, put it inside here. Or we can use the concat method to concatenate. I'm going to take an empty array and I'm going to add these values to the empty array. So both A and R, those are actually brand new arrays. They're not copies. And just to prove that this is what's happening, I'm going to here add mort onto the end of this list. So this is going to be added to this variable right here. Then I'm going to write out that variable. Then I'm going to write out names. And then I'm going to write out A and R, those new ones that we created, just to see whether or not they actually have mort added to them. So if I save my file and I run this, there we go. The first two had mort added. These two did not. I only had one line that said push. I was pushing it onto this variable right here. This variable points to here, which points to here. I have a reference to names. I am pushing mort onto my reference to names. These first two lines, these are actually the same object. I'm just writing out the same object twice. These two lines, now these are actually two completely different variables. This is a copy of ARR, and this is a copy of ARR. If I were to, let's say, jump in here and say a dot push, and add Belcher onto there, and now I run this again. There, we see this was added, but only to A. It wasn't added to ARR or names. It was added to A, and it wasn't added to R. So these are not references. These are actually brand new things that were created using the values from here. So just something to be careful about when you're working with arrays. When you pass an array into a function, if you're calling methods that make a change to that array, you are changing the original array. And array from or concat are two ways that you can get a copy of that. All right, so that's arrays. What about objects? Well, same sort of idea. If I'm going to have a function called g here, I'm going to have an object called archer. Inside of archer, I've got a property called characters and a property called info. Info, in turn, is an object with a couple of properties inside of it. One of them is a boolean, one of them is an array. So archer is an array. Archer has a property called characters, which is an array. Archer has a property called info, which is an object that has a couple of things inside of it, including an array. Now, I'm going to run this function down here. Let's move this up a little bit. 
There we go. All right, I'm going to call this function g, and I'm going to pass my object archer up to this function. Now I'm using an arrow function here. That doesn't make a difference. I just used both to show that it, it could be done either way. I'm going to pass my object archer up into here. So this obj, this is going to be a reference back to archer. Anytime I write obj, it's the same thing as if I had written the variable name archer. I just have an internal local reference back to archer. Now object.assign, this is supposed to create a brand new object for us. That was kind of its primary purpose. We define what the prototype is, and then we say, you know what, hey, this object right here, I want you to make a copy of that and pass it in. So my new variable here, O, this is supposed to be a copy of whatever this is, obj, which is archer. So O is going to have all of this stuff inside of it. Fair enough. So if I clear my screen and I run this again, there's obj, there's archer, and there's O. And we can see that they all have the same characters. They all have the same properties here. So I, I have effectively copied, but what they don't tell you, or what's kind of hidden behind the scenes, is that a sign is only creating a shallow copy. That means it's only creating brand new copies of stuff at the top level. If there's things that are deeper inside, like the fact that characters, this is actually pointing to an array. So this is a reference to a box somewhere in memory that holds an array that has four things inside of it. Info is actually a pointer pointing to some object that's stored in a box in memory. I can come in here and make changes. Let's change inner from true to false. Let's change info.nums, the array, to b456 instead. If I run this again, 456, 456, 456. So I did object.assign. I copied it over, which is what assign is supposed to do. It's supposed to take the values here and move them over. But when I changed it on obj, it changed obj. It changed archer, which is what it was referencing. And O, even though it is a brand new object, still points to this object and this array. If we make changes to them, like this, here, I'll add Cheryl onto the end of this. There we go. So Obj has Cheryl added, Archer has Cheryl added, and Cheryl is also added to our brand new object. Archer was supposed to be copied by object that assign. We're supposed to take the values. And it did copy the properties over. It said, okay, we have an object. That object has two properties, one called characters, one called info. I will copy those properties over. What's inside of them? Oh, you have some other objects inside there? Well, I'm just going to use these properties as pointers, as references to those other objects. So these aren't part of Archer. This is a, an object all of its own sitting somewhere. And this isn't part of Archer. This is an object sitting someplace else that we are just pointing at. When we do the copy, we're not getting copies of these objects. We're just getting copies of Archer. And that includes pointers to these. When we change it, when we add something to it, we're adding something to that array that was sitting off somewhere in memory. Now here's where it gets interesting. If I say obj dot characters is equal to this, what I'm doing is I am changing obj and I'm changing archer to say, hey, you know what? Your property called characters no longer points at this thing that had the four names inside of it, it's now pointing at a brand new object. So this one has been taken away. Inside of Obj and Archer, I'm now pointing at this array. 
since I copied obj before into o, o, its character's property is still pointing back at the old version. Let's run this again. So obj has the new array, archer has the new array, but o, the one that copied, it's still pointing at the old values. If we come in here and we add Cheryl now, now that we've changed what was inside of there, so Cheryl has been added to this new one, Slater Sterling Lana. So both Obj and Archer, which are really just references pointing to each other, they've been changed to point to this new array, and they both had Cheryl added to it. But, oh, that brand new object that we created, it's pointing to the original one, and Cheryl was not added here. And that's because, line 37 here, this is what divided the two. This is pointing to a different object that is sitting somewhere else in memory. When I change to point away from what it was originally pointing to, to point to this new object, at that point there's this split that happens. So O still points to the one that was originally pointed to back here. This is changing the one that's inside of Archer and Obj. Now we're going to return that brand new object here, just to keep testing this. My function's going to run. I'm going to return O, which was the copy that's still pointing back to these original values. That's the object that's going to go inside of here. So really this is a pointer back to the object that we created inside of here. And we're going to add Cyril into that. So the theory is that Archer should not be affected because Archer is now pointing to this array that got Cheryl added onto the end. New obj has its own array, which was the original one here that we were adding Cyril onto. So we'll give that a try. And actually, here, let's clear that up to make this a little easier to read. Okay. There's obj right here. That was the copy of Archer. So it has Slater, Sterling, Lana, Cheryl. Archer should be pointing to the exact same thing. So these two are the same because obj is just a reference to Archer. They're identical. O, right here, is the one that we created inside here with object assign. But as soon as we told Archer and obj to point to a new thing, now O is pointing to what was originally here. So that's still in memory. And there it is this, and then the new obj that we're trying to add Cyril to. Sure enough, Sterling, Pam, Lana, Mallory, and then Cyril. This was added to what characters was pointing to, which is the array that was being originally pointed to by characters. And then info is what was changed right here. So all three, obj, archer, and o, and new obj. All four of them are still pointing at this object, which is somewhere in memory, and we're all sharing that same thing. So if we make a change right here, new obj dot num uh, sorry dot info dot nums like this, or here let's just do push. We're going to add the number. Eight into there. I am through this going to be changing this object which is shared by everybody. So down here at the bottom Archer has eight and new obj has eight. So Archer and this new obj even though they are completely separate objects. Internally, both of them have an info property which is pointing to this shared object. And if we make changes to this shared object, the changes are going to be reflected in both of them. 
And this is what's known as a shallow copy. That's what object.assign does. It gives us a shallow copy of the object. So how do we get around that? Well, there's a few different ways that we can do it. One of them, we can do json.stringify of our object. So if we put our object inside of here like this, this will stringify the object and then we can do parse. Doing those two things together will actually create a brand new copy of the object because it takes it from an object, turns it into a string, and then from the string you're saying, hey, build me an object, a brand new one. So that will create a copy. Message channel. This is an object that you can use with service workers. So when you've got service workers and you're talking back to your original script, there's an on message event, there's a post message method to pass things back and forth. When you send an object through a message channel, you are creating an actual copy of the object. History API will create a copy of the object. So if we're doing history.replace state, the first parameter inside of here is what the state is going to be. I can pass an object into here, and then if I ask for the history.state, I will be actually getting an entirely new object, a copy, a deep copy of the entire object coming back. And the final one is the notification API, which also has a data object associated with it, which will create a copy of whatever you pass it. The only issue with this is the notification API is fairly new and there's permissions issues and people can say, no, I don't want to allow this thing to create notifications. So it's not a great solution. History API works fine. Uh, there are limits to the number of times that you can call this on a page within a certain amount of time. Message channel requires you to start another thread, create a service worker and do all this, or wrap it in promises. So there's a fair bit of work. Um, this one right here um, is probably your best choice. Uh, and in terms of how long it takes to process it, if you've got a small object, and I mean by that, if I've got an object which is under a K, right, this one is definitely well under a K. If you've got an object that is small, under a K, this is your best approach. As the object gets bigger, this gets a little bit slower. Now, we're talking about a situation where you need a full copy of the object. There won't be very often that you do need an actual true full copy of the object to work with. As long as you understand where the shallow copy happens, where the referencing happens, and how you can change. So inside of here, obj.info, I could point that. I could create a brand new ob object. I could say somewhere inside of here, we could say that O, my brand new object, its property info is now going to point to a brand new object. And I could put the new properties inside of there. I could use object.assign to create the new ones here. And that would work fine. Then I would be pointing at two separate objects. So this could be um, object.assign starting with a blank object. And then we're going to bring in ob.info. We're going to make a copy of that and bring it in. At this point, inner becomes a brand new property nums becomes a brand new thing, but we still have a shared reference to that array. So you'd have to go one level deeper. And you can see, it can get very complex. If you've got a very deep object with lots of nesting going on, it can be a lot of work to separate them. It is possible to do though. So with all that in mind, good luck creating your objects, good luck creating the copies of objects. I'll leave a copy of this code as a link to a code gist and uh, let you experiment. And as always, thanks for watching.